Okay, one, two, three. My clap was lame. I wonder if it's even loud enough to be heard. Come and play with us, listeners. Come and play with us for the 13 nights of Halloween. Hi, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat's 13th Annual uh, 13 Nights of Halloween. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield. And you haven't gotten sick of saying that all this time? <laughs> I will never get sick of it. Ever, ever. Okay, so today is our special uh, episode. Our, our, it's kind of like the pinnacle of the, uh, the whole marathon or whatever you call this deal we're doing here. We kind of talk about Halloween subjects for most of these, but at the end we always want to share some kind of a story uh, a scary story uh, as part of the event, and today we're doing that. We have a special story that we're sharing, and what is it called, Rish Outfield? It is called From Another World, and uh, it's not really a story. Oh, I, I suppose that's true. It's an audio drama, and because uh, it's an audio drama, we thought we would have Brian Lincoln join us today because he is... Uh, I don't know that he's the king of the audio drama, but he's like a duke or an earl or a a, a prince of audio drama. A viscount. Oh, is that right? I think of a squire that just left his master. <laughs> a masterless samurai of the audio drama, Brian Lincoln. How you doing, guys? All right. Well, that's cool to have Brian Lincoln along with us. Brian has been doing this series of now would you call it an audio drama or is it like a faux radio show what do you call hidden harbor mysteries Brian it's an audio drama but it's sort of harkening back to the old time radio sound so it's it's kind of got some of the old like commercials and sound effects that you might have expected back then but it's got modern elements too it's kind of a mismatch of old and new style so i just call right. it an audio drama <laughs> it starts out with like a uh what is it called a Wurlitzer organ and then it always ends up with music that's modern. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do the final credits with a more modern sound, just to make it a little clearer that that's done on purpose, the old sound. <laughs> and uh, it's written as though it's a lost audio drama from the 1940s, right? Right. Yeah, it's called Hidden Harbor Mysteries. And uh, yeah, there's even references to uh, the main characters, the femme phantom. Veronica Jaguer plays her, and she also gets called comes out as the actor which is a fake name samantha eubanks that for one of the promos before one of the episodes so there's sort of this feeling <laughs> that she is a, she's playing an actor playing a part kind of idea that's neat uh, can you give the url man yeah uh you can find it at www.hiddenharbormysteries.com and you can also find it on my website lincolnaudio.com and it feels to me like the shadow or you know if you heard the old superman show but it's much more of one of those dark Avenger, a guy who, uh, who who criminals should fear kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, only it's a woman in this case. Yeah, women in tight leather, I think, is kind of the theme. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good theme. With whips and sword fighting and stuff like that. Murdered by pirates is good. <laughs> uh, and has it been fun? Or uh, you, you were telling me earlier that you've done 15 episodes? Yeah, I had them all, all the lines sent out at once and probably late last year. I think this was back when Big was moving. <laughs> it was why he wasn't sent anything because I thought he was a little bit in limbo at the time. Yeah, I most definitely was. <laughs> uh, and uh, so I cast it and gave people some time to get stuff in. I had a few recasts along the way, but I pretty much had all the lines in before I got super serious with production. I produced it all, all at once. So it was 15 episodes. Uh, I don't know what the t final length is exactly. It's in the four to five hour range. And it took a while. <laughs> well, but it's worth it for all the money that Eagle brand cigarettes is, is handing you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I picked up smoking. Four out of five doctors, Big, recommend Eagle brand cigarettes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good to know that their doctor recommended. A fag that won't gag. Anyway, uh, that's not the first audio drama you did. You did um, HG World before that for a long time, right? Yeah, that's been a show that's been kind of running for quite a while. 
don't know exactly. It's been a few years since I started helping them out, and I'm actually working on the very last episode right now, and then I'll be done. But um, yeah, that was my first foray out going away from the full cast audiobooks that I've done with you guys. I really cut my teeth with your show, starting to do episodes with you guys, and I got interested in trying audio drama and getting to know that end of the audio spectrum, and so I went and had an opportunity to put that show together with Jay. I pulled in just a immensely talented group of people from all around podcasting to be in it. I was really proud of the group that I got and even more proud of the performances I got. Uh, everyone took it pretty seriously and did a great job, so it was a lot of fun. Big, you'll be impressed to know that Ayub Kote works on it. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah. Did I say his name right? Uh, I pronounce it Ayub Cody, and I have no idea if that's right. <laughs> oh, he's my favorite, no matter how you say his name. <laughs> um, we had Ayub Cote on a sh our show once. I think it was an episode you produced, Bryant. Yeah, I know him through HG World, yeah. I loved saying his name over and over <laughs> and over again. Yeah. During sex. Uh... He's, he only appears in one episode, but it's opposite Rish's character of Michael, so it's a lot of fun. Okay, well, anyhow, uh, this was my first attempt at a, a real audio drama. We had written stuff before that had, like, a narrator, but uh, I tried to do it. And, and afterwards, Brian, maybe we can talk about the difference between producing audio drama and producing full cast audio. Sure. Cool. But, uh, yeah, only the listeners can decide whether this is successful or not. But uh, it's going to be me and Big and Brian. Then we'll have a special guest star at the end. Cool. That's not a Yub Kote. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you guys excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> and who's who's putting this together? Shoot, who is? I am. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so I guess we're going to head right into the story then. It's from another world. Okay, well, uh, enjoy? Question mark? From Another World by Rish Outfield. Go! Go! There down the hall to the storage room. Where? To, to the left! Door to the left! I've got it. Come on. Where's the palm pad? It's got a knob. You turn it. Are you all right? Just hold. I'll be fine. What is all this? The dried goods. Cereal, crackers, food. Here, help me close and lock the door. Does it have a lock? It's, it's just a big closet, Captain. Never needed palm access nor a lock. But if we push some of those big boxes... Okay, I, I see. <sighs> Wow. These are crackers, you said? Those are baked beans. 24 cans. Here, take another. Any idea what's going on, old man? I'll explain in just a minute. Block the door. Hey, wait. Open up. Ignore it, Captain. Push the thing closed. It's me, Crewman Lawrence. Open the door. Do you know him? Keep it closed! Here, I'll help. He's strong. Well, I I can't hold it anymore. Let me in. Captain, don't let... Hey, what's the disrupt, guys? Didn't you hear me out there? Draw your weapon, Captain Seymour. He could be the source of all this. Hold it right there, mister. Wow, you are a big fella. Don't shoot. My name's Lawrence. I'm I'm service and groundsman, remember? Groundsman? Of a space outpost? It's a title we gave him to feel important. He does all the grunt work at the colony. Hey, I am important. Okay, okay. Please, put the gun down. I'm one of you. All right. But no sudden moves. Lawrence, lock the door again. We don't want anybody else coming. Anything else, you mean? 
What do you mean, big guy? About, about what? Ignore him, Captain. He's a bit of a gray bulb. Yeah, well, your hair is white, old man. Now who's funny? I am only 77, snot nose. He... Look, Mr... Cates. My name's Cates. Mr. Cates. I was only on your station for five minutes before there was a loud racket. The lights started to shut down and all Mexico broke loose. What exactly is going on? I have to admit, I have no idea. Station Chief Cuthbert started to make an announcement, saying that the perimeter was down, and then the power shut off. Chief Cuthbert is dead. Him and Shepard. The, the communications officer? I was with her when all this started. She ran in to talk to the station chief. I was waiting when Mr. Cates here grabbed me. I, um, panicked. I have to admit, you were the first person I saw, and I just ran. I saw you guys run past and didn't know what else to do, so I followed. Is that all you saw? You mean the aliens? Yeah, I saw those too. What aliens? Nobody said anything about aliens. Lawrence, you don't know what you're talking about. Just hush up and we'll let the captain contact his ship. I tried that before, but it wouldn't turn on. Your radio? What, is it powered by batteries or something? Something was blocking my signal. I'll try it again. <phone rings> Captain Seymour to Monroe. Captain Seymour to Monroe. Who's Monroe? That's the name of his ship, the Monroe. Come in, Monroe. <phone rings> Ain't they there? I sure hope so. Got almost 20 good people in that docking bay. Of course, they're still there. There, there must be a dampener turned on somewhere in the outpost. That's why the lights are pulsing like that. Maybe the aliens got your ship, Captain C. Lawrence, well, damn it. There is no such thing as aliens. Y you've lived out here for how long? Three years? No, four. And in all that time... On the station? But in three, four, five months it'll be... Listen to that. He's like a big four-year-old. Hey, I may not be smart, but I ain't blind. I know what I seen. What I saw? You saw it too? Oh, thank Walt. No, no. Look, Lawrence, you need to calm down. Rest that huge body of yours. That's right. Take deep, slow breaths. Why? Uh, are we almost out of air in here? No. At least I don't think so. Mr. Cates? The oxygen is fine. The pumps are self-regulating and have solar backups. Okay. Lawrence, is it? Yeah. I'd like you to start at the beginning. All right. I always wanted to go up to space, but my dad said I wasn't good enough in school. But I heard of this program that would take any... No, no, not that beginning. Start with when I came on board. Well, you didn't tip me. I got your carry-on and... Lawrence, you G-dub. He means tell us about when the danger started. Well, I don't know nothing about that. I was filling up the cold storage wing when the lights flickered. No, wait... I hear a rumbling sound first, and then the lights start up. I stop, and I can hear this sound. Not sure what it is, but I listen. Somebody's screaming. Man or woman? Man. They're saying, something's coming through. Something's coming through. Close the gate. Hurry. Gate? Oh, he means the anti-in barrier that circles the station. It's on most of the time, but they brought it down so you could dock with us. What's the barrier for? You get sandstorms down here? Not usually. It was installed as soon as the colony went live, per regulations. It's designed to keep out pathogens or local wildlife. Like devil minks. Devil minks? What are... Devil minks do not exist. I've been stationed here for going on eight years, and I've never seen a single... Aliens didn't exist neither. And now they've invaded the station. <laughs> so you say. Enough, Mr. Cates. Why didn't you put the barrier up again? Because it's not vital. It's up the whole year, and it's nice to get fresh air through here. Besides, it takes a lot of power to turn it on and off. We didn't think it was that important to switch it on again. You shoulda. Those creatures were just waiting to come in here. Waiting for their chance, and you gave it to them. Lawrence, only the station chief can lower the shield. You know that. And only he could put it up again. Please, don't throw blame. Mr. Lawrence... 
Continue your story, please. You heard shouting? Oh, yeah. I hear yelling, so I come out of the cooler. And suddenly, there's all sorts of noise. A guy runs past me pulling the first alarm. It's Twain. He's freaked out, yelling about slugs. Slugs? Someone hit him? No. Let me talk. I went to the viewport to see if, you know, I could see anything. There was a lot of smoke from the explosion. What explosion? What blue? Is my ship all right? No, the ship was fine. The smoke was coming from the comm tower. It was on fire. That's why our transmitters aren't working, Captain. You said there was a dampener somewhere. Well, I, I didn't know there'd been an accident with the communications tower. It wasn't no accident, old man. Somebody blew it up. I saw him there from the viewport. Well, who was it? It was creatures. Two of them. Man-shaped, but gray all over, without faces or fingers or nipples, you know? Slugs. Come now, Lawrence. That's ridiculous. Don't call me names. I saw him, and so did Twain. You said it was smoky. Maybe you don't know what you saw. They were walking my way. They got clearer when they got closer. They were aliens. Aliens. Okay, slugs then. And where did they come from? A ship like the Monroe? We would know if any ship... They came from outside the gate, from the wasteland. Nothing could live out there, my boy. That's why they call it the wasteland. This is me ignoring you, old man. You believe me, don't you, Captain? Well, I'm not sure what to believe. I've been on space transports for more than two decades, and I've never seen a single alien, nor met anyone who's seen one. Well, you have now. But Lawrence, what if... What if what you saw was some kind of environmental suit? Something the people were wearing so they could walk around outside the gate? Isn't that more likely? I... I, I don't know, sir. They looked so... Well, their skin was... Young man, I think the captain is right. If someone sabotaged the comm relay, it makes sense that they would try to hide their identity with a suit. That's not what I said. I... But, but it makes more sense than aliens, boys. I, too, have lived a long time. Well, only 77 years, but nearly 50 of them off Terra. I've never seen hiding or hair of alien beings. Well, these didn't have hair. <sighs> What were they doing, these aliens? They were glomming onto Corporal Winnick. Glomming? I, I don't know how to explain it. There were baby slugs on one of the aliens, and then they went on to Winnick. Winnick screams, but I don't hear it because of the plexi, and he falls to the ground, wriggling. Uh, who's Winnick again? He's our head of security. Only person on the station tougher than Lawrence here. Not anymore, it would seem. No, actually, after Winnick falls down, he gets back up all of a sudden, like he's completely okay. The slugs are gone. I think... <sighs> you think? Don't encourage him, Captain. I think they went inside him. The slugs invaded his body? And then he starts to follow the other two aliens, only by now... One of the aliens is Twain, and the other's Cuthbert. Well, now, wait just a minute. You said Cuthbert was dead in Chief Shepard's office. Yeah, the real Cuthbert is dead. The one walking around, that's a fake. A fake. An alien knockoff. Exactly. Nonsense. We've been exploring space too long to believe in little green men. They were gray. But if these beings can look like us... We'd never know what we were dealing with. Never know that they weren't just ordinary... They replace us. They came from out there. There's nothing out there, Lawrence. Rocks and dust and a mineral-rich atmosphere. Maybe slugs like that. Maybe. You... You believe him now? I try to keep an open mind about people. There's an open mind, Captain. And then there's an open mind. Martians do not exist. Hey, my cousins are all from Mars. They exist for sure. Yes, but, but they're not from there. Mars is a rock. They are too from... Let it lay, Mr. Lawrence. Let me talk to him for a minute. Look, 
I think I'm a fair judge of people, of their reliability. I look into his eyes. He saw what he saw. I couldn't just dismiss his story outright. And now, yeah, I think I'm starting to believe him. But if he's telling the truth, Captain, we're in worse trouble than we thought. I know. If they really were out there, biding their time, then it's obvious why they chose today to strike. I said that already. Because the barrier was down for more than a minute or two. It's my ship. If they take my ship, they can get off-world. Get out there. We should get to the ship, then. Take off before the aliens can. No, no. Only I can access the ship. Don't you know how private vessels work? Well, they fly from world to world. What else is there? Now, only the captain can access the main computer. It prevents mutinies. I've worked too hard paying off the Monroe to have somebody steal it out from under me. Then maybe they're already in the ship just waiting for you to turn it on again. That... That makes a certain twisted sense. What's the twist? The twist, my addle-minded friend, seems to be your swaying of Captain Seymour here to your story. I don't understand. Well, you said these slug monsters took over somebody. Twain, how do we know you're you? Because I am. Maybe you're the alien. I've been here for years, Lawrence. Years longer than you. No, old man Cates has been here for years. You could be somebody else. An outposter. Imposter. By now, anyone on the station could be under alien control. Yes, except this is all nonsense. There are no aliens. Prove it. What? Prove there are no aliens? Isn't it more logical to try to prove there are? Prove you're not an alien. How do you propose to do that? With a urine test? Well, if it comes out the wrong color... Right. Yeah, that's excellent proof. I'll go first. We ask each other questions. Things no alien would ever know. Like, who won the 80 World Cup? An easy one. Uh, well, I have to admit... No idea. Well, it was New Africa, duh. Come now, just because we don't know old sports stats doesn't prove that Martians exist. I told you. My cousins are from Mars. Stop it, guys. Listen, my ship, the Monroe, it was named after a famous woman from history. Who? The most beautiful woman who ever lived. Uh, Mona Lisa? Or something like that? That wouldn't be Marilyn Monroe, would it? She was a, a princess in America, right? An actress, I think. In Australia. Look, that don't mean I'm one of them. It don't mean nothing. All right. Tell me the name of your maternal grandmother. Oh, what does maternal mean? On, On your, your mother's, mother's side. side. Oh, right. Hmm. Granny Kelly was mine. Her last name was Thies. Her maiden name? She never got married. I, uh, well, I didn't have a mother's side. Two dads, remember? Oh, uh, oh yeah. How about you, old man? Last name Brinkley. Died when I was seven. Okay, you two. Finish the sentence. Two roads diverged in yellow woods, and I took... <laughs> He's never going to know that, Seymour. The road less traveled. Oh, well done, young man. So, hey, back on Earth, uh, what color is the ocean? Blue. Blue. Wrong. Water is clear colored. <laughs> well, suppose you got us there. Don't indulge the boy, Captain. All right, you two, finish this lyric. I wish I were in the land of cotton. Is that another poem? Ancient song. Old times there are not forgotten. Look away, Dixieland. Okay, okay. Here's one, even older. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Take a bad song and make it better. Lawrence, remember, remember to let her... I don't know that one. Come on, everyone knows the Beagles. I think they were called the Beagles. All right, smart guys, finish this. Off the streets, off the system, you can't rhyme, so just listen. You know, fine lady, that's not what I thought. 
only thing that matters is... Uh, uh, if I got a shot? That you're... Uh, hot. Wrong. You're both aliens. This is getting us nowhere. If one of us were an alien imposter, I think we could tell. How? A feeling. A sense of wrongness. And uh, are you getting anything like that from either of us? No. But, look, we'll head back to the ship. I'll call my people out. We each submit a blood test and a body scan, me included, and my crew will examine it before any of us goes on board. Sound fair? Uh, sure, okay. Yeah, that sounds logical. Are you convinced now? What? That there are aliens? Well, I don't know about that, but... Monroe to Seymour. Come in, Seymour. What's that? That's my comm. There wasn't a signal before. Your ship? Are they getting a signal through? I think they're trying. Seymour to Monroe. Come in, Monroe. Lily, can you repeat? Look, uh, some areas in the colony are worse than others. Something about the materials in the walls and ceiling. Move around. S see if you can find a hot spot. A, a what? Yeah, it's an old saying. It means a place where the signal's clear. Captain Seymour, can you hear me? Please respond. All right, stay here, guys. I'll be right back. Good luck, Captain. Hot spot. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I suppose. I knew that cotton song, by the way. Sure you did. What was yours? The last line in that song. This is Captain Seymour. Do you read? Seymour to Monroe. Guys, can you hear me? Lily? Gomez? I thought I heard somebody there. Please repeat. What's that? Hey! Are you two fighting? Hey, lay off, guys. He's... He's the one! When you were gone, he started to turn. What? No, I didn't. His face changed. B became something else. He did. His face did. Hold still. Kate, what's that on your shoulder? Your neck? Seedlings! They came out of him! Please, get him off me! No, no, he's the alien, Captain! Stop, both of you. Freeze. Captain, he's trying to trick you. Please, get them off, Seymour. They were in him, not me. Don't let them get me. Lawrence, back away from the old man. Do it now. All right, don't shoot. It ain't me. Okay, okay. Now step to the side. Slowly. Okay. Stop yelling. Captain, he's got one of those things on his arm. It's not me. Hey, do not... <clears throat> Captain... Are you all right? I'm sorry, Captain Seymour. I... <clears throat> Look, uh, I'm sorry for punching you, but I'll do it again if... Freeze, Lawrence. Don't move. You put that down. I said freeze. <clears throat> Kate, wh what What did you do? I, I only meant to wing him. I... He's dead. Right in the temple you got him. I'm, I'm sorry, I... I don't know how to aim properly. I, I'm just an engineer. Give me that. Walter E. Disney, why did you have to kill him? We could have questioned him. Found out what their plan is. Found out if there were more of them. I'm going to sit down, Captain. I thought we established what they wanted. You and your ship. It's a solid theory. They've waited a long time. Patient. Thoughtful. And now. Yeah, now. <coughs> Maybe I am old. That, that took a lot out of me. <coughs> hey, where'd those things go? What things? The, the sporacles? The little slugs. I don't see any around anymore. They must have gone back into Lawrence. Disgusting. Captain, I, I'm sorry about the boy. I really abhor violence. Yeah. I used to hate it a lot more than I do now. And then what happened? <laughs> Got better at it, I guess. It's gotten quiet. Yes. Peaceful now. Like early morning when the suns are not yet up. 
pretty? Is it pretty here? Sometimes, I guess. After so long, you hardly notice it. So, what happens now? We wait, I guess. I need to rest for a little while. We go to sleep? Sure, if you feel like it. And would I ever wake up? If you went to sleep? Or would you just assimilate me as soon as I nodded off? <laughs> assimilate? <laughs> what gave me away? Not just one thing. It added up. I should have caught on earlier. Might have saved Lawrence's life. I doubt it, Captain. He was going to have to go eventually. Sorry. You're grabbing me in all this. It wasn't an accident. No. You want my ship. To get out of here. That's right. I've been on this station, in this form, for over a year now. How? The barrier dropped one day, as it sometimes does. And I was the only one of us who managed to get inside before it went up again. I'd been watching the old man, off by himself. He was painting the vista with watercolors. Tate's was, is, fairly talented. Just undisciplined. I grabbed him, became him, and integrated myself into the colony. And no one ever caught on? There was a woman, Dr. Silverstone. She picked up on things. Subtleties. Don't suppose I have to ask where the doctor is now? Colony life is fraught with peril, Captain. Do you hate us? Humans? Not at all. I feel I understand you now, living among you for these months. You're lazy and indisposed to reach in your true potential. But you do have many positive qualities. Admirable qualities. So, what now? In a moment, my friends will unjam your comm signal. And we'll tell your ship you're on your way. I'll go with you, of course. Of course. We're being monitored right now, you see. That's how I was able to get you away from us when I needed you to. Why don't you just kill me now? I don't want to kill you. I need you. Or, more specifically, what's in your head. Besides, I like you. Great. That makes me feel all warm inside. A quality our two species share, Captain, is curiosity. What is out there? Who else? I always wanted to meet aliens. That's why I entered the Navy as a kid. I wanted to be the first to make contact. Well, you succeeded. You're not the first, but among them. In a way, you've made establishing contact. This is the first conversation I've had with one of you. When I wasn't pretending to be old man Cates. Well, that's something anyway. Let's rest for one or two more minutes, and then we'll get a move on. Sure. One thing, though. Yes? You tipped your hand. Tipped my... <clears throat> no! Got it! Got it! <laughs> ah! Huh. Oh. See... You let me know your weakness. Weakness. You were in an old man's body with his strength and reflexes. Only 77? Not that old. Old enough. Now, here's what we're going to do. You'll get your friends to... Oh, those slugs, they're coming out of you. Is that like your blood? They are me. My seedlings. Stop it. Call them off. I'll fire again. Keep them away from me. <laughs> no. Keep away. I killed the old man. You should die too. <laughs> get, get off me. No. <laughs> Okay. I'm 
putting the gun to my head. Unless you want me to pull the trigger, you seedlings will get the hell off me. I mean it. You need what's in my head. I'll fire. I'll... I can't fire. You've done something to me. My finger. Please. I'm not one of you. I don't... I'm a human being. Hey, Jude. Don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember... <coughs> All right. That wasn't so bad, was it? See more to Monroe. Come in, Monroe. Captain, this is Lily. Can you hear me? Yes, I read you. Captain, there was interference before. We tried to contact you, but... Lily, don't worry. We worked it through. Everything is fine now. I'll be headed back to the ship soon. We're going to have a little company. Company, sir? Someone is coming with you? That's right. I'll explain later. Is everything all right, Captain? It will be soon. See more out. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. There you go, everybody. That was the uh, finale, the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it. It's not really a story, though. The end of the drama. That was the last of the drama. Oh, no, I don't do that. <laughs> the adio drama. Hey, uh, Brian, would you mind sticking around with us, uh, come, coming back tomorrow, and uh, we can talk a little bit about how the story was done? Sure, sure. Okay. Is that all we need today, Big? Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and finish up the uh, this episode of the 13 Nights of Halloween. Tomorrow, we'll be back with our post-show episode, our post-story, our post-drama episode of uh, the 13 Nights of Halloween. We'll be back then. Talk to you later, folks. Thanks for listening today. I'll see you later. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rashad Field. And I'm Brian. <laughs> Yay. Okay, we'll see you folks. Good night. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. This show is lame. As lame as Rich Outfield? No, not that lame. <laughs> <laughs>